All right. Okay. So uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about our new uh, Masters of uh, Science Quantum Technology uh, degree um, at the Australian National University, um, which is based in Canberra in Australia. Um, I'm the convener of that degree. Um, so if you have any questions uh, that you that don't get answered here, feel free to uh, drop me an email um, and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, so the degree um, is a fairly new degree. Um, we only had our first comm commencements in semester one this year. Um, and it's an augmentation to the Masters of Science at ANU. The way ANU does its Masters programs, it'll run the Masters of, Masters of Science is an overall umbrella, which then has different specializations, this one being quantum technology. The degree is a two-year degree and also and is also offered as an advanced version, uh, which is essentially the same, but it also entails a research project. So whereabouts are we located? Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Canberra, um, Canberra is the capital of Australia. It's located somewhere between Sydney and Melbourne, um, about probably three hours drive south of Sydney, and has a population of about 400,000. It, it, it's actually, I think, a really nice city to live in. It's called the Bush Capital because there's lots of um, lots of trees everywhere. Um, this is a shot of the ANU campus. Um, physics department's over there near the lake. Um, we're about 10, 15 minutes walk from the city, but you go 10, 15 minutes walk the other way, you've got a hill covered in bush. And that means it's not that uncommon to see things like kangaroos wandering around campus. Um, so that's quite nice. Um, ANU is also a good uh, place to study physics, I'd say. Um, it's uh, the largest physics school in Australia. Uh, it has over 200 academics and PhD students, and it, it has a large focus on uh, quantum research, both fundamental and applied aspects. Um, and, and as a result, it's active in several uh, centers of excellence in, that are quantum focused. Um, we have a lot of international collaborators. Um, and recently we spawned, particularly relevant for the quantum technology degree, We've spawned several uh, spin-off companies with a quantum focus. Uh, quantum Brilliance, who are working on uh, diamond quantum computing. Uh, Nomad Atomics, who are doing uh, quantum sensing with uh, cold atoms. And uh, Quintessence Labs, who do uh, quantum communications. Uh, three, three very different fields uh, sort of spanning quantum technology. Um, the degree is targeted at, um, essentially we're, we're targeting uh, it should be relevant for most people who are interested in um, a job in the quantum industry, um, which will require a whole range of different skills. You'll need scientists, you'll need engineers, but you'll also need a whole bunch of peripheral roles. Uh, for instance, uh, there's a lot of banks that are interested in hiring uh, quantum experts. So they have a quantum expert on their books um, who uh, can, can keep them up to date on quantum cryptography, etc. And our particular degree is trying to um, have enough flexibility um, that will cover the, um, the tech skills that will um, fill the needs of any of these roles, as well as also um, cover any gaps in knowledge um, that the uh, students might have. And this means that um, we can cater to a whole bunch of uh, different backgrounds, um, but we do have a general prerequisite um, of a bachelor's degree in uh, physics, engineering, mathematics, or an approved cognate discipline. So. Uh, something like computer science would probably be okay. It, it just sort of, we just have to really look at your um, uh, exact transcript and what courses you've studied. It's really to ensure you have the sort of maths and physics. You have some basic level of maths and physics background. Um, we're open to both domestic and international students. Uh, the degree is marketed at uh, essentially anyone. Um, although, of course, the international students has the, co the caveat, as everyone does at the moment, of um, uh, what the COVID situation is at the moment. Okay, so when we looked at putting uh, this degree together, we had a look at what sort of courses we think we'd need to um, create such a degree. And we thought we'd need essentially these different fields. Um, we need some specialty quantum technology courses. Um, these would have to then be underpinned with uh, some level of quantum physics theory. Of course, a lot of roles in the quantum industry aren't gonna need an absolutely really in-depth knowledge of uh, high level quantum theory, but you're definitely gonna need some solid groundings in some of the basics. Um, We'll also need some technical skills for building, uh, constructing uh, various devices and, and, and or, or even just appreciating what goes into the design of them. We also think it's important to include some broader society courses. Um, 
which are things such as looking at the impact of quantum um, technologies on the, um, uh, the broader world and um, uh, also, also just, just thinking those more sort of general skills and more thinking about how, how the science we're doing relate and the technology we're developing relates to the, um, the kind of the real world, if you like. Um, we also set the degree up with uh, the ability for students to take some electives, which again are designed to fill in any gaps in knowledge they have. So someone from an engineering background might not be so strong in the physics, might need a few more physics courses. Someone from a physics background, uh, if they've done theoretical physics, they might not know so many hands-on courses, they might need a bit more of the um, sort of engineering building type courses. And then the final part of the degree is a research project, which is only part of the advanced option. Uh, a sample course outline would look something like this. Um, uh, so in your, your first semester, you might do your basic sort of quantum mechanics and some um, uh, other degrees before you get uh, some, um, some of the more engineering type skills before you get into the um, specialty quantum technology relevant topics and then finish off with a research project. Um, I'm not going to go through these in detail, but if there are questions, I can go through any of them. But essentially, some of our courses, uh, quantum technology essentially covers all the basics that you'd need for a um, quantum quantum degree. Um, for, for, for in the, it covers a basic introduction to all the relevant areas of quantum technology, sorry. Um, so computing, communication, metrology, etc. Um, quantum industry is one of these uh, more um, broader society courses where um, it, it doesn't necessarily look at the specific physics behind it, but it looks at um, really sort of a business case for the, them. So um, we look at the current or future state of a particular technology um, and uh, what's, what, what would be the business case for that or what would be the broader economic implications of that particular technology. Um, and th this course also involves a number of guest lectures from um, uh, experts who are actually working in the industry to kind of give students an appreciation for what what goes through their, um, what, what their thought process is. Um, special topics in quantum technology is um, a <clears throat> course that students can take several times. Um, and we essentially put this in because when we we're putting together our, our course, we kind of decided that no matter how in depth you did, in a two year degree, you were never gonna cover all the aspects that you need of all quantum technologies. So these special topics courses were our answer to that where you can, uh, which allows students to specialize on a particular aspect of quantum technology that interests them. Um, so, and, and they'll obviously find um, uh, some uh, supervisor to explain, explain the technology or take them through it or give them hands-on experience. So it, it can really, really take a varied number of um, approaches, reading courses or research projects or um, yeah, critical analysis of something. And students can take between two and four of these courses throughout their degree. Um, then we have quantum theory, which is covered at a basic level and also an advanced level, depending on the student's background. They can either do one or both of them. Um, technical skills. So the technical skills for the quantum in industry, um, because it's sort of a uh, growth industry with lots of startups, um, a, a lot of the skills aren't really classic engineering type skills, although there's obviously a basis for that as well. Um, but a lot of it involves really hands-on learning um, and really solutions-driven problem solving. So we have these uh, courses that are um, designed to cover that. Fundamentals of Noise and Measurement um, really covers the, the basics and, and the basic concepts needed for all the engineering you'll need for this sort of skill. Uh, it's kind of, you can think of it as like an engineering for physicists type course. Um, and then uh, Rapid Prototyping and Systems Integration gives students a hands-on experience building a range of small projects um, with sort of electronics and um, uh, yeah, construction and other things, engineering aspects. Um, the broader context, I've already talked about quantum industries, physics for future leaders is another um, course that uh, looks to apply physics approaches to a range of real, real world problems. Um, and there's also other options uh, in, available in electives for students if they want to more sort of uh, project management, for instance, or um, uh, innovation or entrepreneurship, um, those type of courses. Um, as mentioned, the advanced students will be required to undertake a research project, which will be a um, project that takes up an entire semester. Um, and from this, they become embedded in one of the uh, world-leading quantum research groups at ANU, and they would um, look to 
uh, undertake a small research project as part of that um, on an aspect of quantum technology. Um, it could, in principle, also be taken externally um, as an internship at a quantum technology company as well. Uh, there's also um, a lot of elective options. Uh, students can take not normally three electives um, from uh, a range of courses here, which are either general physics or engineering or um, computing or maths or um, uh, sort of entrepreneurship type courses. And, and th these are really just to fill in whatever gaps uh, they feel are uh, lacking in their um, uh, previous background. And of course, you can also take extra core units. So if you want to do, um, as I mentioned, you, for instance, you only have to do one quantum uh, theory, but you could do two if you want to. All right, so that's about it. Um, our degree is still fairly new, as I mentioned. We only had our first enrollments this year, and um, unfortunately, due to COVID, um, that kind of uh, stuffed around our international uh, enrollments a fair bit. Um, but but we've had we've had uh, five students this year, and um, uh, we're really sort of starting to ramp up now. Hopefully, as um, travel restrictions start to relax a little bit more. Um, the degree does have uh, an intake in either semester one, which in Australia is a February start, or semester two, which is a July start. Um, and yeah, essentially have a look on the ANU website. I'll refer you to the ANU website for more uh, details on any of those aspects of it, um, sort of admin type aspects. Um, or otherwise, yeah, feel free to drop me an email if you can't find an answer to any of that. Thank you, Sean. Let me uh, ask a question or two just to get started. Um, you know, when you were going through your slides, I was, I, for me anyway, I was getting the impression that it is very technolo technology, perhaps even engineering focused. But as you work through the slides, I started to change and it seems, it seems like you're offering a buffet of options here. Uh, where you you've got some clear technology um, base, but then the the student could go in many many different directions should they choose. Is that a yeah, fair character? Absolutely, that was definitely the intent in doing it. We we feel that any student who's going to work in the quantum technology industry has to have some background in um, the fundamentals of. The, the engineering and um, the sort of device engineering and prototyping and building that goes behind these these things. And of course, if they really want to get into that more, they, they can really specialize in that. But it's it, that's, that's only a minimum. That's We are really trying to keep this as flexible as possible. Um, and um, yeah, allow students to choose the sort of path that really interests them. Yeah, it's uh, you clearly spent a lot of t time designing that in, and and early on like this, it's flexibility is key. You don't know where the market or the demand or, uh, you know, where that will take you, and it seems like you're positioned for that. I'm I was particularly interested in in the um, the quantum industry course actually because uh, here at Harrisburg, when I put I have a program here too, as you probably recall, that. Um, I have a course like that as well, and uh, so I like minds. I, I I think that's a really important course to have. I noticed in all the other programs so far, and all the ones I've talked to, they've all been very technology focused, which is important. Uh, but I think uh, I, I like that approach. That you know, you really do need to you do need to have uh, some some industry awareness, I think, uh, if you're going to go out there into the job market and be, a, be uh, you know, productive in this industry because it, it, a lot of it, there are a lot of business issues and characteristics and just that whole angle <coughs> that you should be aware of. Uh, so yeah, I really like that course. Yeah. And, and particularly as academics, I think it's very easy to focus and get caught up in the physics and the technology and, wow, isn't this wonderful? But at the end of the day, if your device, if whatever widget you've built doesn't have a commercial case behind it, yeah. it'd be the fanciest widget that does the best physics, it's, yeah, no one's, no one's going to fund your company. It, it that, takes a student yeah. out, you know, it's ni a nice bridge for the student to, to start to recognize that. 
definitely. And, and the hope is as well, but by having some guest lectures, by leveraging sort of some of our contacts with different uh, quantum tech companies in Canberra and also brought it further afield, um, we'll also start giving the students some industry contacts as well, um, would be the idea. Um, which, yeah, which, which is also, and, and, and conversely, hopefully we serve the industry by putting them in touch with good students um, who can then fulfill whatever jobs needs they have later. In in Australia, do do students tend to is the master's degree tend to be a terminal degree for people? Uh, like in the United States, it's actually considered a terminal degree uh, in in many fields, uh, and in Europe, it seems to be a stepping stone for a PhD. What what is what is the context there in Australia typically? If there is yeah, so it's kind of partway in between the two. So generally speaking, if you want to do a PhD straight out of undergrad, you'll do uh, honours, which is kind of equivalent to the US master. Not US master. It, 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 it's, it's kind of a, it, it's a bridging between, um, uh, it, it's one year between your undergraduate and PhD. But you only do that if you're going straight out of your undergraduate. And because our, um, because of the people we're aiming at, we're, we're not just aiming at people straight out of undergrad. We're aiming at people who might have worked in the industry for a while or, um, you might be looking to uh, sort of upskill or reskill into the quantum um, to sort of become quantum enabled. Um, and so the, the, the master's degree in our case, it's, it's, it's flexible. The, um, the advanced option is definitely set up. Um, if you finish the advanced option and you get a good, good mark in your project, you'll be totally set up for a PhD student and the probably groups chasing you um, the way these things go. Um, uh, so yeah, it, 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 the, the, the non-advanced option doesn't really have a pathway to a PhD, but the advanced option certainly does. Um, and so yeah, it, it really, again, has the flexibility of being either. Yeah, I think uh, being a new program with, some, with a, a ton of flexibility put in there, it really, uh, really allows for the student to kind of form a degree around you know, their needs or their, their aims. Uh, I think that's uh, really valuable. Yeah. Yeah, and that's definitely by design. I mean, we, we don't know exactly what students are going to like. Maybe, maybe in a couple of years we'll find that all the students want to take a particular special topics course, or they all want to do more quantum theory, and then we'll make that part of the core curriculum. But, yeah, yeah for the moment, we are leaving quite flexible. Yeah, be nimble, be nimble. Uh, let me take a break here. Any questions out there in, in listener land? The microphones are... Are open. If, um, hey, 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 uh, so, um, uh, great presentation, first of all. Um, really looking forward to applying at your uh, place. So, um, could you uh, describe a little bit or, uh, you know, emphasize on the kind of research that, uh, or the areas, particular areas uh, in which you would, uh, you know, your university or your department uh, does a research in for uh, con particular to quantum computing? Could you basically? Uh, Explain a little more on that because. Yep. Uh, yeah. So um so uh, ANU has uh, we have a range of different um quantum groups with more more experimental than theory although there are theory groups as well. Um so we have I I, I come from a cold atoms background uh, I work with uh, metastable helium Bose Einstein condensates um and so. There's, there's a couple of uh, ultra-cold atoms groups. There's also a group on rubidium, who were the ones that spun off the company uh, Nomad Atomics looking at quantum sensing. So they tend to do more sensing. My group tends to do more uh, pure, um, uh, pure physics experiments and less <coughs> technology experiments. Um, and oh, apologies about the dog. The dog's barking or something. Um, <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, so then there's, um, there's also uh, a couple of quantum optics groups. Um, group of Professor Pinkoy Lane um, and um, a group of Matt Sellers. Um, so Matt Sellers' group tends to work with rare earth ions, so looking at um, sort of uh, quantum memories and uh, quantum repeaters and quantum storage sort of uh, telecommunication wavelengths and, and a few other wavelengths as well. Um, Pinkoy's group tends to do continuous variable uh, stuffs and also, um, um, also have... Uh, uh, vapor cell sensors as well. Um, so yeah, they yeah they, they can do yeah quantum teleportation, quantum squeezing, those sort of experiments. Um, 
that they need a continuous variable regime, um, and their group spun off the company Quintessence Labs. Um, what other groups do we have? There's a group that does Polariton research, um, which is sort of a crossover between condensed matter and quantum uh, research, but definitely um, is promising for device applications. Um, there are a couple of theory groups, um, and yeah, and also some sort of uh, yeah, no, that's they're, they're probably the main quantum technology relevant groups. Right, right, yeah, uh, great. That that sounds great. Uh, also, so um, so just like how uh, Terrell mentioned, right? Um, uh, so you you mentioned how students uh, tend to uh, uh, either pursue the research based or pursue a PhD after their uh, master's degree or. Some students, uh, so it's 50-50, right? And people do tend to go to industry as well. Uh, so, oh, yeah. absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so, what kind of uh, job opportunities are there in Australia? What kind of companies uh, do come for industry uh, to uh, at your university? Yeah. So, um, it's a great question. There are quite a few quantum startups just um, starting in Australia. Um, so, the three I mentioned. Um, uh, quantum brilliancy and um, nomad atomics are only in the last couple of year or two. Um, Quintessence Labs has actually been going for a bit longer. They've been going for I think, over 10 years, over 10 years. Um, then there's also um, Sydney has has quite a large quantum focus as well. Um, Michelle Simmons's group uh, have, have spun off a company on um, uh, looking at um, uh, solid state quantum computing, so using phosphor um, quantum dots. Then there is um, there are some uh, quantum related companies in Melbourne as well. Um, and so, yeah, so it, it's, I mean, it, it's, it's starting to take off in Australia, the quantum industry, but um, uh, it's, it's, there's, most companies are still sort of just in the, in, in the early growth stage, um, early stages. There, there aren't too many really well established ones, although that's kind of true of everywhere to understand. Um, and yeah, and then of course there's, yeah, there's, there's, other job opportunities, well, the more peripheral opportunities, um, like I was mentioning, for instance, um, uh, finance, and, um, or policy, or defense, or whatever. Right. Okay, great. Uh, also, you mentioned that there are two, uh, there's an advanced form of this degree. So, uh, what are the requirements to, uh, you know, pursue that particular field? Is it any different, or like, do we, or yeah, what are the requirements, basically? Yeah, it, it's, it's just a GPA-based uh, entry. So, I, uh -huh. I a normal degree, I think you need a GPA of five out of seven, and for a um, the advanced version, you need five point five out of seven. And then you also to stay in the degree to do your research project, you need to maintain that average through um, first year. Okay. So uh, as per your, um, so do you have uh, like a requirement? Uh, do you have the details of your admission requirements? Like, uh, is the GRE uh, necessary, a compulsory thing, or? Um, uh, anything as such, or the, any other exams or something? Um, for all those, yeah, you probably best just just so I don't say anything wrong. You probably best to check those um the sort of specific admission questions on the website, um with the specific admission stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, I I, I I'm just worried I'll get, I'll get it wrong. Sorry. Um, That's okay. Yeah. No problem. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Any further questions? Any last call? Okay, great. Thank you, Sean. Uh, well, I do have one quick one, just roughly just, uh, and I'm trying to avoid the admissions type of questions, but this one I just don't know, even have a sense for. Uh, so generally, what's the application um, uh, uh, window for let's say what was it uh, February of next year, for example, is that something? Uh, w what's that application window look like in advance? Yeah, so there's um, it's somewhat complicated because there's a couple of rounds of offers. So you, you can essentially apply at any time, but there's a couple of rounds. And one of the first round just for February, I believe, just closed at the end of October. I'm sorry, at the end of September. But um, uh. But there's there's a second round as well, which closes in November sometime, I think. And I think there's even a third round after that. Um, 
And so it really depends on uh, places. My guess would be this year, internationally, there's going to be a lot of places available because we're probably going to be short of students. So if you have a way of getting yourself to Australia or are willing to undertake the first part of the degree online, um, then, uh, yeah, I, I, I think there would still be places open for February. I, 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 but again, I yeah, could be wrong on that. Well, at a minimum, you certainly caught my interest with that picture of your campus. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a great campus. It's really looks nice. looks beautiful. Right. I, I I gotta as soon as we get out of this COVID mess, I gotta do a road trip. I'll find some excuse, stop in and say hello to you. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. All right, Sean, thank you very much. I really appreciate it, and uh, 